All right, so I like to make these why blank didn't work in the NFL videos. I think that they're interesting to look back and, and kind of discuss what went wrong. Um, so I want to make one for Justin Fields, but Fields is a bit of an interesting person to make a video about this like, right? Because he isn't someone who completely didn't work out at the NFL level. He did have, you know, I thought an okay season last year. It wasn't great, I didn't think. And, you know, it wasn't great enough that the Bears did decide to move on from him and he was only able to get a sixth round pick back. At the same time, I don't think it's like over. I think Fields could maybe one day still be successful at the NFL level. So this is not a why did he not work out at the NFL level. It's going to be more so why didn't he work out at the NFL level with the Chicago Bears? Because that we know didn't happen. You know, in the Fields era, it just did not work. Uh, again, a lot of times these guys are complete flameouts. That has not been the case with Fields. But I wanted to discuss uh, what went wrong for Fields. And we're actually going to use NFL tape, but kind of talk about some college tapes. So, yeah, let's just get into it. First things first, you can't completely divorce situation from player. Um, while, at, you know, to some degree, you certainly can still evaluate the one player in a given situation. There's no denying that the situation was not great for Fields for most of the his tenure. And I'm sure he's a little bit bitter about the fact that right when he leaves, they go out and trade for Keenan Allen and draft Romeo Dunze. I mean, I think the Bears are doing the right thing, kind of realizing they made a mistake and adjusting. But for Fields, it's probably a little bit frustrating. But, you know, there are plays like this where you have, uh, it's, you know, Darnell Mooney running a deep shot down the field, which I, I like Mooney, uh, you know, but still, when this play begins, you're going to see Fields takes a snap, you know, one-on-one -on -one matchup, kind of throwing a little bit off balance due to pressure getting there. And this isn't very open. And again, Cleveland Browns defense did this to a lot of good receiving cores last year of not giving up too much of a window. But that's that's the situation. Fields does make this throw, and it's just a bit off. And, like, listen, you could certainly sit here and say, well, if that throw was a little bit, you know, uh, not quite as far, could that maybe be a completion? You, you can make that argument for sure. But I guess my counter argument to that is – you're putting Fields in tough situations. No wonder his hit rate is going to be lower than someone who's in better situations. If you have wide open receivers, you're going to just hit them more frequently. Let's just be honest. Fields wasn't exactly in the best of circumstances all the time for the Chicago Bears. But let's move on to this situation now. Where, so, you know, a lot to unpack here. You see it's a zone coverage that the Cleveland Browns are in. And you see the concepts on the screen that the Bears will be running. Essentially, though, one of the more over-the-middle routes, that's probably what could end up working for Fields. That, that you know, uh, that's where he's going to be looking when this play begins. However, when this begins, it's not working out as designed. Again, you could put some blame on the Bears for this, as we certainly saw this many times over the years of guys not getting open. Granted, there's the other side of things of we also saw many times guys getting open and Fields not making the throw. So it, it would kind of go both ways a little bit. But still, here is to me an even bigger issue. It, it, this is something we saw in college, which was when something wasn't open, he would still hold on to the ball for forever. And it did not get much better at the NFL level. As you see, he holds on to the ball, eventually starts to scramble, but gets tackled right there. He, you know, that internal clock, for a lot of guys, it's, okay, I have to get rid of the football because something bad's about to happen. But with the emergence of rushing quarterbacks, it starts to become, okay, I have to get outside the pocket because something bad's about to happen. The issue is you're going to get some, you know, yes, you're going to get some good of that. You're also going to get some bad with that. And while you saw some great scrambling from fields, you also saw a lot of stuff like this. And, you know, a lot of times, there's more of these opportunities than the great scrambling opportunities, although not every time. And there also was a bit of just, you know, uh, he, he would sometimes just make the wrong decision. I mean, that's just what would happen where this concept, for example, you know, uh, you see the two routes towards the offense's left. This is against zone coverage here. Fields is going to take the snap. He eventually looks towards the left and, uh, you know, is a little bit under pressure right here, but can get outside the pocket. So that's what he's going to, of course, try and do. Fields would scramble outside the pocket. He's going to fire off balance. And right here, it's, I know it's a little blurry, sorry, but there's a, a Browns player and a Bears player. And really, the Browns player has a better chance at this football than the Bears player does. This is not a great decision by Justin Fields. I'm not saying he was doing this all the time or anything like that, but he definitely would put the ball in harm's way far too frequently. That's definitely something I noticed with him. 
again, this is something that was considered an issue back in college. And in fact, kind of his biggest defenders would still acknowledge, okay, yeah, there is this issue with him, but you just hope that it doesn't, you know, come back to bite him too much. Well, uh, you know, on this one, it came back to bite him. And I think it, it too often came back to bite him. I think they were hoping he would get better at this stuff, but that just doesn't always happen. And for Fields, it, it, it I think he got a little better. I do, but I don't think it was better enough. What's interesting is that if you look at his uh, Walter football page, this is prior to coming out of the draft, these were his pros. Uh, you know, a accurate passer, good arm strength, can make all the throws, which are all things I think were proven to be true. And it's a lot of, you know, good... Uh, Good arm talent stuff. You know, uh, we also see a lot of you know good uh, athleticism, mobility, that kind of stuff, which was also very good. Um, the the only ones that you kind of look back on uh, is the, the bottom two, which were upside and avoided turnovers overall. The, the upside was certainly there, and, and and we saw sometimes real flashes of it. Uh, the avoided turnovers overall, though, is an interesting one because that's very results oriented. He did put the ball in harm's way a lot. The issue was he was in a good situation in college and wasn't given the opportunities to put the ball in harm's way as as frequently, I thought, which is kind of what led to that. As for his weaknesses, I mean, we see the things that we've talked about, you know, poor pocket awareness can get rattled by the pass rush, can freeze when seeing the blitz, uh, also a little bit down. We see field vision needs development, uh, and then right above that was needs to check the ball da uh, down more. So, you know, those kind of things that we talked about and even uh, needs to get, uh, get quicker working through progressions, all of that stuff were things that, you know, we still saw issues with at the NFL level. And this is why I find him to be such a unique player to talk about. For someone like Justin Fields, it's kind of really easy to sit here and say, you know what? I want a guy like Fields who, uh, he, sure, he has some issues. He needs to get quicker through progressions. You know, the blitz can, uh, you know, uh, disrupt him. The pass rush can disrupt him, holds onto the ball for too long. All of those are fixable issues, and, and they are. And, and maybe he still will fix those issues once he gets to Pittsburgh. That's certainly possible. All of those are fixable issues. At the same time, though, for, uh, for Fields, it, it's, it's sort of like, just because those are fixable issues doesn't mean they always get fixed. It also doesn't mean you shouldn't draft a player like Fields because there was the upside. There is the athleticism and the arm talent. And if he did get better at those things that he was not great at, he could have been a legitimate star in this league. So I actually think that even though I was a bit lower on Fields, I think if Fields came out today, uh, as in came out of college today, I would sit here and say, you know, uh, I, I would personally like him more as a prospect, I think, just given how I view quarterbacks now of, hey, there are, you know, there is a real benefit towards just drafting a guy who is a big, af great athlete. Uh, it could work out. That being said, I think it's also fair to say you can't just assume you're going to get better at stuff. You can't just assume things are going to get better. I think Fields got a little better at all this stuff, but it just wasn't enough. So just because someone has, a, you know, a flaw that is maybe more uh, mental than physical doesn't mean that it's going to be fixed just because it could be is kind of, I think, the main point with Fields. But hey, it could be fixed. There still is time left. His career is not done yet, but for Chicago, it did not work out. But yeah, those are my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from y'all, and of course, as always, thanks for watching.